Hello, got a ELRS receiver from Beta FPV today, which is in here and is very small. I don't know what you're thinking. We've dealt with very small before. Um, I had a look at the Happy Model PP receiver and took that in, I think I put it in some sort of toothpick style quad. That was very small. Um, I had a little ceramic antenna. Here's one from Namimno. This is a bit bigger because it's got Wi-Fi enabled and you've got the little ceramic antenna just there sticking up. And these get pretty good range, especially if you put them in whoops and stuff. A range uh, as, as much as you like, pretty much. You're not going to run out of range. And, and I know people have tested these in wings and they're getting, you know, 3K and stuff like that. But some people mentioned to me in the last one that they, you know, when they put the heat shrink on, the ceramic antenna dropped off um, and they were perhaps a little fragile in how they're positioned. So what's interesting about this one is it has a flat antenna which makes it even smaller and potentially less breakable. But I think you'd have to work quite hard to break it. I don't think you'd break it in a crash. I think you'd break it while setting it up. So just taking it out of the bag, you get some wire, you get some heat shrink, and then you get the receiver, which is this big. And comparing it to that one, it's it's about half the size and is obviously completely flat. I think we're gonna have to go to close up, aren't we? Just to have a proper look at this. So let's, let's do that now. And here it is in a close-up and it's so small if I try and go in any closer it just won't focus not only is it small but this little tiny piece of wire you can just see in this corner here is a Wi-Fi antenna so I believe this has a Wi-Fi chip on it so it's we should be able to update it via Wi-Fi as well and you can just see how tiny that antenna is. If I compare this to a regular ceramic antenna, and here is in the Mimno one for a reference, you can see the difference. As I said, there's there's nothing wrong with these. These are absolutely fine. But I did get a, a bit of feedback from people. It did say when they were installing it and put the shrink wrap on. That's when they found that the antenna may come off. And I said before, I don't think you'd damage this otherwise. It was just uh, the question of it. You know, it's the only bit sticking out. So in terms of where you might put this. I mean, the obvious place is you'd get your favourite whoop and you'd stick it in. I mean, look, that will just rattle around inside there. But that's a bit boring. Well, I say boring. I mean, the problem with these is the battery doesn't last long enough. I like to do a bit of a range test on this and by the time I've gone like 100 metres, I have to turn around again and come back again. So what can we put it on? Release the bone drone. Yeah, I flew this not long ago and it misbehaved a little bit. Um, but the main thing it had was this XM Plus that lost the signal several times. We just got full RX lost, the thing fell to the floor. I've been waiting to install a different receiver on it, so I'm going to put this in. Now, I'm not going to be trying to fly this to the ends of the earth or anything. This should get around 600 metres, according to the documentation. And this is something that I, you know, I wouldn't take, you know, beyond sort of 400, 500 metres anyway. So I just want to see how this holds up in a quad like this because at least we can fly it for a decent amount of time we can take a look to see if it gets any sort of dips and uh, drops in the signal and you know it's the world's your oyster where to put it i can just put it in there if i want to anywhere i like um yeah so let's get this installed and uh, we'll go and fly and see what happens okay i've been pulling apart this quad and that's the old x and plus i'm going to replace now Despite this being an F7, it's a bit lacking in any pins because obviously I want a receive and a transmit on a UART to use with uh, Express LRS. Now there is extra UART in this sort of socket thing here. I think that's the one, but I can't. I haven't got a, something to go into that, and I don't really want to solder directly on there. I thought this may be an interesting time to see what we can get if you've got the situation where, where you've just got a single S-Bus pad. Now you can't get Express LRS to run S-Bus, but you can invert the TX pin so it will talk to it. And what happens if you don't have the second pin, the, uh, the TX on the flight controller? Well, you lose the telemetry and means you probably lose the ability to talk Lua, but I think it should work and I thought it would be an interesting experiment. So I'm going to carry on with the existing wiring and hook up the Express LRS receiver the same way that we've got this XM Plus used. Can't talk S-Bus as I said, you still need to run 
uh, CRSF, but uh, it should in theory work. Well, let's check it out, see what happens. Two quick things to mention, and excuse the phone filming once again. When I removed the heat shrink from this, this antenna came off. Now, it might have just been that it came off when the heat shrink came off, but it's not like it was very tight, so I'm wondering if that was just off anyway and just kept in place by the heat shrink and that was responsible for the bad signal. As said, generally speaking, XM Plus receiver's pretty nice, not a problem. Anyway, I was taking the heat shrink off because at first I was gonna desolder this and resolder it back on and then I figured actually I don't need it that long. So I didn't do that. What I did do was go ahead and solder this little guy in place because I wanted to see what would happen in terms of it is it does it have that wi-fi chip it does indeed it's flashing away there and if you look on my screen because i've connected to it we have indeed got the receiver up there so i'm now going to flash this a little bit differently than normal okay here we are in the express rs configurator my goodness to bring in updates quickly it uh, only seems like yesterday I updated probably because i did and here we go again anyway we're still on uh 220 and my target here is bit FPV 2.4 gigahertz and the 2400RX. I'm flashing over Wi-Fi. Uh, note that I won't be able to use bit FPV pass-through because I've only got that one wire hooked up to it. But the only other thing that's different here is I've ticked this receiver invert TX because uh, the S bus port is inverted. I have gone ahead and said I'm connecting to an inverted uh, port normally you'd have an uninverted UART you'd use, but um, on this case, I'm gonna use invert TX. Doesn't mean it speaks SBUS, as everyone's uh, very clear to point out, you still need to run CRSF, but this should help us when we connect it to a port that's traditionally been used for SBUS. Anyway, let's try building and flashing this guy. Okay, done, let's check this out. Okay, well that's beat of flight and you can see we're getting a, a signal there through the radio, but not initially, I have to say. When I first went ahead and did this, I saw that the receiver was bound, but I wasn't getting a response from it. And the reason being is because I'm using an S7 controller here. So with an F7, what happens is it inverts or uninverts the port depending on what's happening. And CRSF would be a non-inverted protocol, so it would simply make sure that port's uninverted. If it was back to uh, SBUS, then it would change back to inverted. So this meant that I had to reflash it without the uh, receiver invert TX on. Now this is fine with F7s and F3s, if you're really still using them, because you can control the inversion. On an F4, you can't. So if you've got an F4, which has SBUS, it will be stuck on inverted, and that's when to use this. On an F7, we didn't need to use it. Okay, here it is, the bone drone, ready to fly. It's got the little flat antenna in, which I think is not gonna give the best range ever, but it'd be nice to try in a nice open field. Got a bit more room if this thing goes crazy. I also bought some different props, just in case the flex of the props is the thing that was causing weird issues last time. And I'm gonna be flying this with the Radio Master Zorro as my sort of daily radio now, um, because it's nice and small and I can just attach things to it. But anyway, let's try it and see what happens. Okay, let's get up and fly this and see what happens. So I'm just going to have the intention of flying a, a regular sort of route and uh, this happens. We have got an RX loss within a, not even 100 metres and I'm just sat there saying, what, what, what? Basically, what the hell just happened? Did I misread it or did it completely lose the signal? And yeah, you just saw it almost go there again. This is uh, this is not good, is it, at all? On the plus side, the actual quad's feeling a lot better than it did. It seems to be able to go into coordinated turns without completely going crazy as it did before. What would happen in a turn that uh, essentially the throttle would, would go full on as it's trying to keep its uh, attitude, uh, even though my throttle was dropped. It seems better. It's not perfect i can hear a bit of oscillation and when i do some more intense things just like that just a little bit higher it uh, it suddenly went a little bit crazy there but uh, yeah the the main problem here is obviously the signal we're getting now from feedback from some of you guys who wanted the dbm value on screen as well that is also there but you will notice i'm only using 250 hertz 
and the power I'm using is 100 milliwatts so everything should be fine let's bring it in and have a, a little bit of a think this is interesting to land because there's a motor straight in front of you you have to kind of guess a bit well first impressions that's hugely unimpressive we had a fail safe not 100 meters in front of me it doesn't seem to like that uh, little flat antenna at all i mean it'd probably be okay in a house in a little uh whoop and that's to be fair that's what it's intended for but i'm going to try dropping my packet rate down a bit further and see if it makes a difference see if uh, we get a little bit more of a solid signal let's check it out so you see we've got the lq of four colon something which is a update rate of 50 hertz which is the slowest you can do on express lrs actually doesn't doesn't feel that different on this quad especially just uh sort of babying it around a bit but the signal we're getting still isn't looking that solid um, i can see it dropping down various rates into the 80s and 70s they're definitely looking back at the dvr footage which is quite useful seems to be points that it's worse than others and i think we're not too bad when the quad is side on to where i'm sitting uh, presumably because we're getting um, a sort of more line of sight signal direct to the receiver when it's going away or coming back uh, especially in the turn it seems worse i'm guessing it's getting blocked there by the carbon fiber frame of the quad that said this quad doesn't have as much carbon fiber as as most it only has a single base part the top of it is tpu so going towards it should be fine but yeah it is it is not a great signal and we're still getting far too much of a drop than i believe we should have so let's bring it down again for one more test of something okay just one more thing to try and that's try the polarization change so we'll go with vertically polarized see if it makes a difference on the signal we're getting okay so this is my last idea of the day i'm still in the very slowest packet rate to try and give the best signal possible we go out and we do the turn and it drops down to look like 44 at the the lowest there which is just not good enough for uh flying outside at all really so yeah i was gonna swap the props around and see if that fixed any of the problems but it didn't really seem worth it given that you know we've got instability still with our signal on this particular rx you see it that quad really didn't like it when we attempted to do a, an inverted yaw spin there it just freaked out again on me so there's there's still work to do on the quad and <laughs> we still need to put a receiver in it that will work properly but uh, we'll sort that out for next time hmm i'm not sure i've already recorded this uh, outro once and i'm having to do it again because i've rewatched the dvr and i've sort of come to slightly different conclusions or slightly inconclusive if you like so we had a problem with range certainly in this and i was originally thinking this is just terrible um the the tower sort of ceramic antenna is better you know the little thing or they're more fragile get that and then i'm thinking is this purely down to the fact that we've blocked the signal. Am I being unfair to it? Because normally in a quad like this, we'd have the antenna coming up somewhere. And even if we flew away from ourselves, we'd be doing it at this sort of angle. So we'd always have that antenna pretty much as long as we're going forward, we're not gonna be blocked unless we're in the nulls. And you've seen what happens in the null, we get uh, a drop as we go down, but that is always there. Now, if I was to put one of the little ceramic antennas inside that i wouldn't expect to get the same sort of range but what sort of range would i get and i did note that even beta fpv themselves stuck an external antenna on this uh i forgot what this one's called the the one with the uh spi base uh, express lrs proper antenna so the one i did um put the little uh, Happy Model PP Express LRS antenna, which is sitting just in there, was this one. This does have carbon here, and I was able to go out to about 500, 600 meters before I noticed the battery had dropped below 10 volts, and I had to get back pretty quickly. So, and on that, that LQ was around the 100. You know, the odd drop to 99, 98, but very, very good. And I can't help thinking that this 
should be somewhere better than it was. So there's there's kind of a mix of stuff here. It's like, yes, by putting that in around a carbon frame, or albeit there is just one thing of carbon, so we should have had a good signal if I'm if I'm here in front of you, good signal, good signal, good signal, and just that one part of bad signal. But I didn't think it was going as well as that. I thought we were having a worse experience with that. But at the same time, I haven't tried the regular ceramic antenna in this sort of quad because why would you really? You'd you'd just have the the normal antenna coming out. So I, I'm trying to sort of play as fair as I can here. Clearly, it did not reach the sort of distance that it specified on the web page. But of course, it doesn't give you the conditions of which it would expect that and you know if I was just hold it up long enough sight with nothing in the way would it put perfectly if there was no carpet around it. So right now I would say avoid this flat antenna. I can tell you that the ceramic tower based antenna sort of thing works lovely on this sort of toothpick and um, little whoop and it might be that that flat antenna works fine in the whoop. Um, I don't know yet because I haven't tested it fully. I'm just suspicious that it's just not coming up as good as expected and I think we'll leave it there because I could just go on and on speculating about it but I won't I'll come back and test it on a different quad and we'll see what happens in the meantime many thanks to Billy FPV for sending over that receiver and of course there'll be links down below to where you can check it out in more detail and I will include links to receivers that are going to work better depending on the model you have of course anyway I hope that was helpful and I'll catch you next video bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.